Okay, so it's that time of the month again. We're back with the monthly free Unreal Marketplace plugins. Apologies that I missed the month of July. I've had a lot of requests to actually cover this again with some of those in-depth looks at the plugins. So back by popular demand, I will try to keep up with this playlist as well. Now for this month, we don't have much of a theme. We've got some really interesting packages though. So we've got the in-game level editor, the route motion guide, a modular sci-fi office, the advanced female customization pack, and Luo's eight elements. Now I will be going into all of them apart from the root motion guide, which is this one here. So I'll just have a quick look into the package. The reason being I have downloaded it. We do need to install this to the engine and it does take a little bit of a setup getting all of the animations working. The nice thing is that it does work with the Mixum animations. You can get your own skeletons imported as well. So you don't have to use the mannequin if you didn't want to. The other thing is you can see they do have a lot of documentation, a really good preview video and a lot of detail in here. So it's going to take a little bit too long to cover just in this one video. There is a lot of information on here and it does look as though it's going to be very, very useful. So this is going to be a good one to download. And I think you can work your way through this one to see what is happening. For the rest of these though, I do have these downloaded and installed. I've had a bit of a play around, had a look through some of the blueprints. So I have a brief overview ready to go for you. Starting off with the in-game level editor, this is one that you need to install to an existing project or create a new project with it. If we come into the folder structure, there are a few things that we can look at. There's only really a few blueprints you need to be familiar with in this project from what I can see. The main one is we're going to be working with the modular geometry and there is a map that we can work in the level clear edit, which is this one here. It's just starting off as an empty map. We've got some sky sphere in the background. Now, one thing to note with this one, it might be the same for you that when I opened this and pressed play, because of course we're installing this to an existing project, you may not have the correct game mode set up and working. If you press play without the project game mode, which is the BP underscore, uh, I think it's editor game mode, the yeah, editor game mode you can find here. So you will need to come into the project settings, go down to the maps and modes, replace this with the BP underscore editor game mode, because all of this is done in runtime so we're going to press play and without that game mode you don't get the widget here so you need the widget you're going to press generate you can change some of the variables here to update the details about the level you'll be creating when we hit generate we're going to get a new widget down here and we can change things such as the type of block we want to place the different shapes that we want to apply uh, and we can see again this is very very easy to get working it's quite a nice interface we can paint some trees into the sea as you always want to do and uh, we can go through and just look at the different tabs and see what's available but that's the the general gist of work on this one it's quite a nice interesting uh, editor to work with and it's got some really nice snapping tools so similar to some of the packs we've seen in previous months if you just wanted to get an idea of how to make a runtime kind of editor with this grid based snapping then you have all of that code ready to go Next up, we have the Luos 4 Elements Particle Effect plugin here. There's not a whole lot again to say about this one. It is, of course, a really good pack. The one thing is that this is all in Cascade, which is a little bit of a shame that it was a Cascade pack that was chosen to go into the, the, the monthly drill. I think more Niagara stuff would be good at this stage, but always remember that if any of these are something you'd like to see in Niagara, you always have the option to come into your edit plugins. I'm using 4.26 and we have the Cascade to Niagara plugin. So do remember that we can put the plugin into use here. So Cascade to Niagara converter, enable this restart. You basically just need to right click if you're not aware, uh, right click on one of the Cascade particles and tell it to try and convert that to Niagara. It's not always perfect. It gets quite close most of the time. And that alone can be a good way to kind of learn some of the fixes you'll need to make inside of Niagara to get a Cascade particle effect updated. So as I said, there's not a whole lot to say for this package. The it's developed by obviously a really well-known name. So you know you're going to be getting some really good quality stuff. Uh, they all look really cool. It's really fun to watch the particles and play here through these small sort of demo scenes. And like I said, there's not really too much to say about the particle system packages. It's all very visual and you can see what you're getting. And if you did want to take a look at trying to get these working with Niagara, and do remember that the converter is there and you can probably learn quite a lot by trying to convert these over if you're looking to get into the more modern particle system and the one which is obviously going to be getting supported as the engine updates occur. So they were the two plugins that are added to an existing project. 
Next up, I'll be covering the female character customization pack. So what we have here is, again, if you wanted to look into a kind of character customization system, then you have a very big blueprint here, which is going to have all of that ready to go. The code from what I've seen so far is all very, very well documented. I like this one for the amount of documentation you have. A small issue here with some engine quirks. They even kind of de describe what's happening there and what that is fixing. And then all of this, every single chunk of code is very well commented again. So it's very easy to jump in, see what's happening. And I think the bulk of the information or logic seems to be housed inside of this blueprint. Uh, you've got some nice blueprint interface setups that are going as well. So again, another really good way to keep your code and dependencies nice and clean would be using the interface system. So if that's not something you're too familiar with, that and blueprint function libraries, this is going to be a really good demonstration of how to separate some of your code out. Uh, but of course, if it's just the customization system you're looking for, then all of that is here as well. I've had a quick play around with my character number one. And um, yeah, so this is quite cool actually. What I'll show you is if we go back to the presets, to create a new one, you need to input a name and we can create a new character. Uh, you get a quick tutorial about what the button prompts and everything are. And we have a character here, so we can customize pretty much everything. You can go into the different body parts, add different bits of clothing. It's got some cloth simulation going on, which is pretty cool. You've obviously seen those videos where people go out of their way to make a Skyrim or a Dark Souls character look as horrifying as possible. And you kind of start with that, to be honest, with this kind of head movement uh, following system and the general looks. But then you can really do absolutely anything with the character. So if we click on the face here, we can give her a new eyebrow type. And then we can make this a nice green color. Uh, and we can do the same for her lips. We'll need to expand this a little bit. So we can go in and change the lip color. So you can really do absolutely anything that you want with this. It's going to be quite interesting. We've got some more values as well. So we can change the cheeks. And again, you can make your character look as terrifying as possible and pretty much how you want. And all of this is covered again nicely in those well commented and documented blueprints. The last one for this month then is going to be the modular sci fi space kit. And this one's pretty nice. Uh, this has a lot of detail you can see there's a lot of noise in the textures some really good reflectivity uh, is really really nicely designed and as always with the the assets i'll go into a little bit of detail on the kind of performance you can expect the way that it's been treated to make sure that it is as efficient as possible in certain places there are some places in this level which aren't quite so uh efficient and that's not really anything to do with the the assets themselves it's just the uh, for the style that they've gone for the type of assets you'd need to use and you can see as well, something I've done here is I have taken every opportunity that I can to update projects to the Unreal Engine 5. This updated to the Unreal Engine 5 with no problem. And if we go and press play, the thing that really surprised me of this is that it has some interaction. So it's not just the assets. You can see you've got a nice overlap thing here. We can play around with different buttons. And as we go through the level, it's not purely visual. Everything has uh, the, the, the buttons attached. We'd need a key card, I think, to get through here. Um, or it just doesn't work, I'm not sure. And then down in this room, we can open this door, go in here, now it's a little bit dark in this uh, Unreal Engine 5 version. It wasn't quite like this in Unreal 4. I think I'd need to change the lighting a little bit. Now this is the room as well. You can see that these are glass panels. We have a glass table, followed with a glass door over there. This is the room which isn't quite so efficient. We can blank this out though, so it's not all glass here. But even the foliage and things in this uh, demo scene are all apparently looking very well made based on the performance profiling you can do. Uh, we can go into things like the lockers and you, you kind of get the idea. Everything is nice and interactable, a lot of detail, some really nice textures, even though it's not coming across quite so well with the default lighting in Unreal 5 here. The, the lighting in the package is very good. And yeah, so it's a nice one. So if we jump in to the editor, the thing that I normally do is we're just going to go into the lit options. We'll go down to the optimization view mode over here. And we can see things like the lighting complexity. So generally you're looking at colors like the greens and the blues are really good. Uh, red is generally where you're going to need to be worrying. And white means that something terrible is normally going on. And not so much in this mode. We're going to want to look at the shader complexity as one where that counts. Now that kind of gave away the, uh, the surprise I was going to go for. So things like the foliage are normally where you have to worry. The foliage is really good here. The, the door panel, I think, because that's got some metallic and maybe opacity on it. Opacity is where it really struggles, which is when you get to the white and the red uh, or transparency. Uh, and you can see because all of this room is glass, you have a lot of that going on. So 
And not really, like I said, any way that you can get around it. It's not saying it's good or bad, just something to look out for there because everything is using those materials that you can see through. You're going to get a lot of that. Uh, when it comes to other things, we've got things like our shader complexity and quads. We can see the quad draw here. Some of the assets are very, very kind of like uh, detailed and high poly like these chairs. So then if we also go into another one to look out for is the quad overdraw. Again, we can see that blue and green are the good colors. White is the one that we want to avoid. And some of the overlap or overdraws just because we can see through so many different layers to those stairs. And we've got the pane here, which is glass. So as we get closer, uh, that actually becomes less of a problem. But in general, again, all of this seems uh, very good, uh, very good quality, very well made. And as though it has been optimized for the game engines, as you would hope. And that is pretty much it. So quite a nice one. I think this is a really, really good looking pack. Some of the materials and textures may be a little bit too noisy for my liking, like the wall back there. You can really see that has a lot of uh, noise being applied to that texture. Uh, a lot of small dimples and things, which sometimes I think can be a little bit overused, but everything like the, the book binders and all of the little bits of detail that are added in, I think really make up for it and look really good. And I love the fact you've got some interactivity, so you can also take away some kind of uh, game mechanics from this as well as just the art side. And as you know, if you've watched my other videos, I really like it when we have some game mechanics dropped in that you can use as a learning tool as well as just ripping the assets and taking them into your own project. So that is definitely a bonus of this project as well.